Hey guys, how's it going? We got another IXL video here. This one covers 07, find missing angles in triangles. Before we begin, the first thing that we need to know is how many degrees does the inside of a triangle always equal? What do you remember from class? 180 degrees. So when we're talking about the inside angles of a triangle, they will always, always, always add up to 180 degrees. We can use that to calculate our answer. All right, we see with this triangle here that one angle measures 30 degrees. Another is measuring at 60. And the third is our unknown. All right, we want to find the measure of that missing angle. There's a couple different things that you can do to figure this out. I personally just use addition and subtraction. All right, so I know that all three together need to equal 180. First, let's figure out how much we have. We have 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Together, that makes 90. Now we can subtract that from our total. We know 180 is our total. So 180 minus the piece that we have, which is 90. And some of you might know this answer in your head, and I love it if you do, but I'll go ahead and walk you through it. Because it's a nice reminder on how to subtract. And my goodness, I forgot to take my glasses off, and I hate that glare. All right. Zero minus zero is zero. We need to borrow here. 18 minus nine is nine. All right, that means our missing degree is 90 which if you had recalled that 90 and 90 was zero, then you would. So that means this triangle would be classified as a right triangle because one of the angles is 90 degrees. Right on. All right, another triangle, but same process. Two of my angle measurements, let's see. One is 56 degrees. And my second one is 65, and we want to know that missing angle. So let's first add them up to see how much I have. 56 plus 65. 6 plus 5 is 11. Carry the 1. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus one more, 121. This one's still doable in your head, but it doesn't stand out quite as much as that last one did. So what do we need to subtract from to find that missing? 180 because the inside of a triangle always adds up to 180. Zero minus one. Oh, we got to borrow. And it's good to refresh this because remember on the FSA, you only have a calculator on half of the test. And this right here is not in the calculator portion. So it's good for you to re remind yourself of adding and subtracting in this method because you'll have to do that by hand when you get these questions on the FSA. And it's not necessarily difficult, but you know, if you're used to relying on a calculator or not used to working with bigger numbers, you may just need that refresher so that way when you're taking a test, you don't panic and forget. And one minus one is zero. All right, that means our third angle has to be 59 degrees in order for it to be a triangle. Bravo. All right, let's jump up to a harder level. Same thing, I just no longer have the picture. Two angles in a triangle measure 118 and 51 degrees. What is the measure of the third angle? No picture, but you could draw one. Or if you don't need one, then just go ahead and solve it. So we need to add the two that we have. 118 plus 51. And then what are we going to subtract from again? 180. A triangle always adds up to 180. Oops. Once again, we got to borrow. 
7 carry the 1. 7 minus 6 is 1, minus 1. Ooh, so that's a tiny angle. But that's what it would have to be in order for that to create an actual triangle. Yay! All right, let's jump to another level. Ooh. A right angle has one angle that measures 20 degrees. What is the measure of the other acute angle? Wait, I only see one number. I only see a 20. Oh, look at that. What does it say at the very beginning? It's a right triangle. If it's a right triangle, what does that mean one of the angles is? 90. So they did give us two angle measurements. They just gave us one angle measurement using words. So make sure you don't go so fast to these that you're like, oh no, they didn't give me what I need. Yes, they did. They were just trying to see if you were reading. All right, 90 plus 20. That's a funky looking nine. 110. What does a triangle always add up to? 180. And this is one that I hope several of you are able to do that subtraction in your head. See if you can figure out what would be 180 minus 110. 70. So our other acute angle, and that's kind of nice. I know that it's right because it told me it needs, I know that it's correct <laughs> because um, it says it needs to be an acute angle and 70 degrees is an acute angle. All right, bravo. Ooh, this will be our last one. This one looks kind of fun. An isosceles triangle has an angle that measures 120 degrees. Which other angles could be in that isosceles triangle? All right, let's think back to our lesson earlier this week. What does it mean for something to be an isosceles triangle? two sides are equal. And if two sides are equal, that also means two angles are equal. So if we draw this out, we have an isosceles triangle, two sides are equal. So that's what we're trying, which means those two angles would also be equal. And I know one of the angles is 120 degrees. What could we do to solve this problem? One way is you could write an equation. Another way is kind of like before, you can just do that addition and subtraction. All right, well, I'm going to work a little backwards because I know that in total it needs to equal 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and subtract 180 and 120 to see what's left over, to see what I'm working with for these last two angles. So 180 minus 120 would be 60. Now I have 60 degrees left over and my two missing angles must be the same. If they have to be equal, what does that mean they have to be? We got to split it in half. So what would be half of 60? 30. And one nice thing is to double check and make sure that you're correct, you can add them all back up. So 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus 120 is 180. Now does it meet the other requirements? An isosceles triangle, two sides are the same, which means two angles are the same. Yep, 30 and 30. One of them is 120. Now, are there any other possible combinations? In this case, it's kind of confusing why it's a select all that apply, because there really is only one answer. Because if it's an isosceles, they both have to be the same. So it can only be 30 and 30. And since a triangle has to add up to 180 degrees, that is the only combination that works for this problem. All right, so sometimes IXL will give you select all that applies and there's only one answer. So it doesn't happen super often, but they can trick you. So just be aware and remember those rules so that way you can be confident in your answer. All right, I hope this helped you guys out. Have an awesome rest of your day.
See ya.